Marshall sent me a story by email the other day and I'm going to read this story and as we read through it I want to point out some of the things that stand out to me that cause the opening of these portals and let things into his life and into his house so let's just read this and then we'll come back and we'll look at the footage and explain what has happened and what caused these things to show up in his life. Hi, my name is Simon. I'm 31 and I'm from Australia. I was looking at YouTube videos the other day, still trying to find an answer for something paranormal I filmed a few months ago. That's when, some, for some random reason, I came across your Hollow Earth Darrow videos. The picture of the Darrows and Tarot's illustrated in the videos looked similar to a strange paranormal experience I filmed back about 27th of February 2014. I accidentally made a light appear on my blinds that I cannot explain. I have closed circuit TV cameras around my house due to the strange activity that was going on leading up to my video. There is an infrared light coming from a camera overlooking my door just outside then the glass sliding door, then my blinds that cover the door. In my room, I use a black light globe to, to illuminate some posters on the walls. With the infrared light and the combination of the black light, I may have illuminated a demon or darrow that was invisible to the naked eye. I strongly believe de demons of some sort was harassing me for at least a year Till things began to boil, becoming more constant and extreme. What I was experiencing was also happening to my five closest friends in various forms. I noticed my closed circuit television camera that plays through my TV in my room was picking up orbs and sometimes groups of them flying past like they were an army trying to get my attention. I would see the occasional orb or two enter my room and then stuff would start swearing at me. Things would fall over and launch at me. My laptop was being controlled by some force and my TV would turn off and on along with solar lights doing this outside as well. I could hear people talking as soft as a mouse and it seemed like there were people sneaking around inside my house. Then the orbs would fly out of my room through the blinds and everything would go quiet down for a bit. When these orbs had entered my room, I could feel them pinch me and put their fingers in my ears and push all their possible weight on me. They would move things around me, especially the few days I was recording. I was trying to get evidence on just one of the strange things going on, but it was always conveniently deleted or my camera wouldn't work every time. Like something was also controlling it, possibly Darrow technology. My neighbor lent me a camera because they believed me that something was going on. About the 27th or 30th, I was sitting in my room on my laptop and turned my flashlight, white lead light, on facing the carpet about a foot off the ground as soon as the flashlight dimly lit the room a little an image appeared on my blinds there's a turkish evil eye hanging over the doorway my mom uh, bought to try and stop the paranormal events it is not visible to in my video i think the evil eye had something to do with what i filmed but there is a real similarity to the Darrow images or drawings. There was an incident that really kicked things off for these couple of days and nights. Where a shadow or hat goes through a nail at me, then in a split second removed the memory card from the camera and put it in an impossible part of the camera, which was near impossible to retrieve. I have an electromagnetic radiation detector for ghost hunting, and it actually worked for these couple of evenings, which scared me even more. As I said, these very low volume voices could be heard threatening to 
smashed my face and head in and swearing at me, but I pretended I couldn't hear them, and they were talking to one another, two of them saying, it's not working. I don't know what they were going on about, but they were invisible and can control my TV, my, my laptop, my lights, torch, neighbor's house, and security lights and lights in distant towns. These things were messing with me, but I wouldn't let them beat me. I just tried to figure out what was going on and for what reason there is so much more details about this I could tell you as I noticed this stuff start in 2011. But upon other information I realized I, I, it started around 1998. I have tried to keep this simple, simple as my video might say more. The first two of the three videos involve orbs that my closed circuit TV camera is picking up viewed through my TV which I'm filming live. When paused on orb footage sometimes different faces or evil faces are visible in various parts of the picture especially next to the dartboard. It's almost like there is a portal to and from hell close by. The orbs when paused at the right time sometimes display evil faces but Look at the video orb at 50 seconds. The main video I want to look at is the one titled Paranormal Spirit Ghost Light. That's the one I accidentally uncovered with the mixture of light that were present at the time. I swear none of this is a lie or fake. Just the fact you might be able to help or explain to me more or you might learn something or mem memories might ignite from whatever I filmed. Just one more thing. I actually had a sa the same experience that you claim to have had when you were about five. The only difference was that instead of a devil there was a PNG or Papua New Guinea mask that hung in our hallway held the power that you described the devil having. And this same experience happened to my sister as we slept in the same room, also about four or five years old. There are three videos, as I believe. They are all linked somehow. Anyway, here are the videos, and please email me your comments or opinion. So, two things just shut straight out of my room direction, and all that stuff stopped. And they won't come back for a bit. When I see them little dots shooting past the screen, weird stuff starts happening in here. That was a bug though, that's different. Some cl that swarm of clear little things. So I want to look at Deuteronomy 18, starting at verse 10. And some of this will apply to some of the things that we pointed out in the video. And I'll explain it here in just a second. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a counselor with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Okay, now we have a few things in here that when you are hunting ghosts, you are a consulter with familiar spirits. Ghosts, uh, I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but ghosts do not exist there are no relatives that are roaming around. Uh, demons pose as loved ones, as a trickery, because if you're absent from the body, you are present with the Lord, as the scripture says. Or when you look at the parable that Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus, when they died, they either went to, at that time, Abraham's bosom or paradise, and then the other one went to uh, the hell at the time which which 
was fire. So, people that say hell's not in the Bible, it is too, and it's described very well there. But a consulter with familiar spirits, that's people who hunt ghosts, uh, or try to contact ancestors and things like that. Now, uh, the evil eye that he had would fall under here, or a charmer. This has to do with those types of charms and amulets and things like that. Those can attract evil spirits. Now, divination is when you um, seek um, uh, you seek information through supernatural means. Um, uh, I know someone who was doing something similar to that and didn't think it was divination, but it was a supernatural means to seek information. But anyway, we, we have the, this here familiar spirit thing, and then, and then necromancer is um, contacting the dead also. Now, contacting the dead is a necromancer. If you try to contact a loved one, you're falling under the necromancer. If you're contacting uh, the uh, ghosts and stuff like that, you're you're also really contacting familiar spirits because they're really demons. And then the necromancing thing is also people who are knowingly um, contacting uh, loved ones and they're they're uh, trying to contact those are dead, like the witch of Endor when. Uh, Saul went to the witch of Endor and asked for Samuel to be brought up. And who knows if that was really Samuel. Um, but the witch did bring someone up that looked like Samuel. And, sent them, and that person was able to tell Saul exactly what was going to happen. Him and his son was going to die in battle the next day. So that makes me think it was Samuel. So these witches... Um, uh, have the power to um, pull up somebody or contact somebody who is uh, dead. And a wizard is the same as a witch, but a higher degree of refinement, more bold and and, uh, and more type of powers and, and things like that, such as the, the uh, people who were with the Pharaoh in the scriptures could throw the rod down and turn into a snake. That's past what a witch is. And... Um, so, we know that this guy was unknowingly, we've already talked, and he is, uh, he's gotten rid of that amulet, and um, the ghost box thing, he's, he's gotten rid of that, that too, and, you know, other, other types of wrong beliefs, even, uh, can uh, attract demonic activity. And this guy, obviously, having things thrown at him is very demonic, uh, you know, that's that's having demons around, and they can throw things. They're physical. They have bodies. A lot of people say, well, they don't have bodies. They're spirit beings, but they're... I have a video that talks about there's different kinds of flesh. There's celestial flesh, and there, you know, Jesus, when he resurrected from the dead, he said, stick your hand in my side, Thomas, and see if I'm not flesh and bone. And that was after he had resurrected from the dead. He had a body. Now, some of the... Uh, demons and what have you, or fallen angels were disrobed, so their bodies are somewhat disembodied, you know, but so these demons have bodies. I've, I've encountered one before, and it had a body. I've encountered, encountered a few, and they, they could not only, uh, they're made higher and, and mightier in power and strength and what have you than we are, they can pass through a wall, but still be solid enough to grab you and things like that. So, anyway... I hope this uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 10 through 12 is um, a very good lesson. So don't do these things because you can open up portals and uh, demonic activity and things like that. So please subscribe, comment, share the videos. I'm asking you please share the videos and I will talk to you on the next video. Be blessed.